hello, good morning. Um, we're about to set out on a little family holiday. Obviously, fishing is going to be involved because any man that really does love his fishing takes a fishing rod or a few. Um, so we're going to Brixham for the week. Um, never been there. Uh, it's all going to be um, sort of shore stuff. Um, we're just going to see what we can do. We've got loads of bits and bobs, loads of tackle, loads of different ideas. We're going to see what we can do. Um, and uh, They're in the bag. Yes. Never half wondering where the dog brushes are. Uh, there's always last minute things to get ready. Um, it's three in the morning. My raft just arrived from Egypt from her another holiday. And uh, now we're going to go down to Weymouth and fish for some LRF gear and try for some carfish. So, let's go. Well, hello, we are here. Very easy drive. I only ever drive long distance overnight. Um, I will not drive in the day if I can help it. I really, really won't. Might be a bit dark for now. Um, we'll get you some light in a moment, but we're here at Weymouth. Uh, coming here because we're splitting up the journey to Brixham, basically. So uh, yeah, we're coming here to just, yeah, break it up and have a little bit of fishing. And I like a bit, I like Weymouth. I've only been a few times, but um, yeah, I really, really liked it last time, but I came here on work, so. It's actually nice to come here for pleasure. So, this is the East Breakwater. It's free to fish. Uh, the parking is quite expensive, uh, but it is free from 6 p.m. to 8 a.m. at the moment in time. So, currently the car parking is free. So if you're coming here for a night session, absolutely ideal. Um, this, uh, this east side wall here, very good for LRFing and also for a little bit of bream fishing on the end here on the right hand side. Um, and also quite good for garfish on the end as well. The west arm, which is over there, you'll be able to see it flashing, the white light on top. That is very good for squid at the right time of year and also uh, conger reels at the end. We had quite a good session last October for the congers. So, uh, we're going to take ourselves to the end here. We've got three rods. We're going to put one out for some bream on the right hand side over there, by that, in line with that pole, that navigational light. We're going to put the float out to the right out in the middle. And then I'm going to come behind me for the LRF thing. Big mixture of stuff today. Hopefully, we can pick off a fish or two. Right, so first things first, I'm going to talk you through the setup. As I did promise, we would start talking about tackling gear a little bit more um, in detail before we start the fishing. We've got a 12 foot spinning rod and just a sort of, I think it's a 4,000 size reel there loaded with braid. That bit's not too important, but uh, the next bit is. So this is just the garfish setup. We've got a slightly larger, too large float really, but to get a small one for gars, but this is just the one I had. We've got a float stop, which goes on first. You then thread on a bead. You then thread your float on. You then put your inline weight on, which obviously cocks the float. Then you put on another bead. And then I've got a little swivel there, which I'm going to attach the trace to, which I've just dropped. So I'm going to quickly go and grab it. <laughs> yeah, it's very windy here today. Um, but Weymouth, quite luckily, is quite protected. Uh, it's quite tucked away. So just the, the bay here is, um, you can fish in most weathers. I was here at uh, a trade show in, in October last year and it was blowing a hoolie. And uh, lots of fish were caught. And uh, yeah, and it was pretty pretty flat all weekend. It wouldn't be very nice out, uh, out in the open sea today, that's for sure. But So I've just threaded on that trace there. I've just got a size eight hook really small hook you don't want a big one for for garfish that's on like that and then we're going to use garfish for bait um, i've got some bit of garfish down here we're just going to chop off a sliver and use that use that as bait there you go as bait that's all we're going to use in fact i'm going to chop that in half because even that is probably a bit big you really don't need it to be big at all that, that's perfect, about a fingernail size. 
and we'll pop that on the hook, we'll cast that out and we'll let that do its thing just to see if we can pick up a bonus scar fish or something on the float, you never quite know. Might struggle, we might not, but we shall see. Just like that, let's get that cast out. wind is taking it that way. Um, I could just drop it down there but I know there's slightly deep water out there and the guards seem to control for it so we'll see what we can do. That's fishing. Uh, next rod to get us up is a bream rod. Right so I said the next rod we're setting up is for bream fishing. Now this is the first video I've done which uh, is going to be affiliated with Limitless Fishing Tackle. Um, they're very kindly sponsored the channel and sent us a lot of gear to use so we're going to test it out and we're going to see what it's like um, so far I'm very pleased with it it looks absolutely fantastic so I made up some rigs last night with their Shinu hooks so all it is I, I keep my fishing so simple guys it's just a double overhand loop which clips onto your clip on the line you've got two two Paternoster sort of wings coming off here little so it comes off the main body and then I've just put the little chinoo on there just with two looby beads and down there we've got our other boom and then at the end here I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the weight on double overhand loop it just goes through the weight like so and over the weight so the loop goes over the weight and then you just pull it through so it all just tightens off like that so all yeah all you lose if you lose anything is a couple of hooks so cheap to make and that will catch you everything you know you can upscale that to 80 to 100 pound line and you can catch big fish on that so all we're going to do is pop on some lugworm on, on this rig here cast it out there see what we can get So far we've had black bream today, we've had pollock, whiting, pouting and one balance. We've got our float out over there, Let's see if we can get some uh, little species here. So we've got a few bites, a 
that's that. Oh, did we miss him? Yeah, we missed him again. Put him back down. Now, a lot of people ask me why I've got the foam on. Um, I use these rods a lot on my kayak and small boat. Now, if they fall in, they'll float. And the idea is, is you, it gives you enough time to rescue. Oh, I can't believe it. We've had loads and loads of fish already. And I'm just, uh, as soon as I get the camera out, I've got someone to actually feel. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm missing them. What's that one? I think it's a white, isn't that one? Yeah, tiny, tiny little white in. There you go. Tiny little thing. So, as I said earlier, this was a family holiday, and uh, my dad's here, and my mum's here. Fess was here. They're all catching fish, and I was just running around. Dad just said, uh, this is a little pollock. I call these kelp. Little kelp pollock. Really, really dark. They live in the kelp. Absolutely stunning little fish. Yeah, it's not strictly our LRF fishing this, because uh, LRF fishing, you're not really meant to use bait. You're meant to use tiny little lures. Um, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, always keep the scourger in your ear, just so you've, already, you've always got one to hand. So, my dad's never caught a garfish, and we're in. Oh, hey, come off. Did he come off? No, you got something there. you got something there. The float shot under, I think there was a garfish on. It might have just popped off, but we think it's a pollock. Oh, it might. Yeah, no, it's a pollock. So, another pollock just on the, uh, on the float. Same setup as earlier, but instead of having that singular hook on the... There you go, there you go. I'll let you take that one off. <laughs> it's absolutely mental here. Um, instead of that singular hook uh, earlier, we put a string of sabikis on. Well, I, I put a string of sabikis on with a tiny little bit of bait. That normally gets gets the garfish well and good because um, sometimes they're not very easy to hook. So if they've got a string of feathers as well, you could, they sort of wrap up. Wrap up. We've got a bite here as well. There we go, another, another tiny pollock, just on a tiny little bit of bait. Just get that one hooked. There you go. Pop them back. Oh, there, you go. Ah, there we go, guys. Look. So, what? Oh, this is a new species. This is what I believe is a sand smelt. Now, these are fantastic bass baits, guys. If you can get them on a float. Yeah, that, I believe, is a sand smell. Tiny little things. They've got slightly rough skin. Yeah, there you go. Pretty cool. Yeah, lovely fish. There we go. Another, probably, biggest pollock of the day, I'd say. Again, very, very small. But beautiful, beautiful fish. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got another 15 minutes, then the girls want to go for breakfast, and I think I think we're going to go to Lyme Regis, and then uh, then down to Brixham. Hopefully, I'll get some fishing in this evening at Brixham. But yeah, this another 10 minutes. Folks on that bang, and he's in. But is he into a garfish? I don't think so. There's about three pollock on here. Three pollock, yeah. Keep winding it so it's tight, so the tension doesn't drop, so he doesn't tangle up. Let's have a little look. So we've got two pollock and a whiting in the middle. I'll let my dad unhook those because I've got some rigs to put away. <laughs> well, when you get two phone calls from the other half, actually I think it was three, you know you're late. And we were walking along there. And my dad went, look, 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 look. I went, they bass. He went, yeah, they're huge. I went, I know. <laughs> so me and my dad want to be fishing for the bass off the wall there. Not particularly going for breakfast, but family holidays, sometimes you've got to um, take the rough with the smooth. But look at this, beautiful, I love Weymouth. Beautiful sandy beach. It's blowing a hooli out there, believe it or not, but we're really protected here because of Portland, Portland Bill. And uh, it's pretty much, the bay is almost, all, almost always flat calm. So you could actually fish it in a boat all year round. Not sure if it'd be any good. I have a little look on Navionics and it all looks very flat. But yeah, if you've not been to Weymouth, come down and have a little fish on the piers for a couple of days because there's some great fishing. You know, we've had, what have we had? We've had Pollock, Pouting, 
whiting, sand smelt, garfish, uh, balamras. So yeah, loads of species already. And now I've got two ladies looking at me with very unhappy faces because I'm ever so slightly late. Ah. What is going on? Help. He's just loud up there. 